Okay, yeah. so we'll start. Okay, hi, and um, welcome to all the viewers of the uh, fifth dialogue on coronavirus and religion, hosted by the International Association of Religion Journalists, the IARJ, um, following the, the panels in U Asia, North America, Europe, and Latin America. This one is the Mediterranean. Um, this event will be uh, recorded and posted on the Facebook page and the website of the IARJ, which is www.theiarj.org. Um, I'm Jonah Mandel. I work for the French news agency AFP in Jerusalem, and I'm also a board member of the IARJ, and I'd like to introduce the other members of this panel. We have Georgia Cloudy, a religion blogger originally from Greece, now in Cyprus. We have Federica Turn in Italy, who writes for Jesus and Familia Cristiana, and she also spends time in Lesbos writing about the migrants and the migrant crisis. And we have Boris Soydan, who writes for T24 in Turkey. Um, still very much in the uh, in the in the in the midst of of the COVID uh, crisis. Um, a pandemic that not only affects our daily routines, but also raises big questions about our very existence. Now, I think religions like to deal with both aspects, uh, those aspects of our lives, both the, the daily, the little things, and also the bigger picture. And today we'll get a bit of a glimpse about how, how different religions, how different countries are um, adapting or dealing with the uh, coronavirus crisis. Um, so let's start. Um, let's start in in Cyprus and Greece, uh, uh, Georgia. If you can tell us a bit about how bad the situation there is in general, COVID-wise, and how religious institutions or or people are are adapting or yeah, dealing sure. with it. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, both in Greece and Cyprus, we had a general lockdown from March till the beginning of May, where we had uh, a few cases cases but uh, all the businesses restaurants uh, uh, shops etc were closed so we made um, a beginning in the beginning of May uh, schools also opened for some weeks and during the summer the situation because it was the vacation period so uh, we had many many cases and now we have around uh, in Greece we have around 300 cases day and around 10 deaths uh, so we have some regional lockdowns and many many uh, strict measures and limitations uh, in Cyprus we have fewer cases in Cyprus uh, we have some strict measures but I think that we are not very close to a second lockdown uh, now regarding the religion institutions First of all, I want to give you a very brief background of the religious diversity in both countries because both Greece and Cyprus have a majority of Greek Orthodox uh, communities. So uh, we have to deal mainly with the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, secondly, we have a few religious communities in Greece, mainly Muslims, uh, Jews, Armenians. And in Cyprus, uh, we have many Muslims, uh, Sunni Muslims especially. Uh, we have Maronite, uh, Maronite Church. Uh, we have uh, Russians and Armenians. Uh, what I want to highlight is that Greek Orthodox Church and Greek Orthodox religion plays a key role in the society. And our national identity is very strongly linked to our religion. We can't uh, imagine a Greek without being a Greek Orthodox or a Cypriot without being a Greek Orthodox. So when the first lockdown came here, uh, the state decided to close the churches and we had a very strong opposition from the society and from the church to this decision. And it was a difficult period because we have the Easter period, which is the most important feast in the Greek Orthodox tradition. And people didn't want the churches to be closed. They wanted to go there. They wanted to attend the services. They wanted to receive the communion. And 
and we we had also many uh, declarations from politicians, from scientists, from doctors who insisted that churches must be open and they must not be opposed to the religious feeling of the society. Uh, so it was a very difficult uh, decision for the state. It was a huge rivalry. After the first lockdown, churches opened again and they opened the communion uh, because we received the communion with uh, the spoon, with the same spoon. And um, till now we have many, many uh, strong positions uh, in the society regarding this issue. It is very important to mention that many politicians, we, oh, actually we had a case some days ago, I think five or four or five days ago, where a minister of the government in Greece went to receive the communion without wearing the mask, without anything in the church. And this created uh, a, a big, big uh, issue in the Greek society. And uh, if we continue talking, we have many cases like this to, to, to highlight. Uh, Federica, how, how's the situation in Italy now? And how has it affected religious uh, practice? Yes, but, um, okay, in, in Italy, as you know, we, we start uh, pretty high because uh, in, in March when we, we were locked in, in, in the house, uh, we are. Um, we were the the first uh, um, the first uh, country after China with the highest uh, number of uh, of COVID um, affected people. So it was uh, uh, like a shock for us. And um, despite of that, uh, we uh, as Italians, you know, at the very first time we we try to to be optimistic, uh, kind of, and uh, you know this, we have. Um, some sort of um, manifestation of uh, putting sheets uh, outside of the windows and say everything uh, is going to be all right, singing and cooking and have a, like, like a sort of, of a community um, on social and Facebook, not only. And okay, it was for the first time, but after we we saw the um, the people the sick people and uh, the, the the shocking uh, images from uh, people dead people no they, they, um, we saw the people dead and the um, army truck uh, took the people uh, and it was it was really a shock for for Italy for the Italy so we we also saw the Pope celebrating uh, an Easter alone on the St. Peter's and it was, um, it, it was raining and I remember all, all, I think all the country was in front of the, the television the, the, with uh, listening the Pope, uh, uh, he was looking uh, tired and uh, it was uh, really, uh, um, a great and then the shocking image. After that, we we try to to reopen, but uh, in the meantime, a lot a lot of people lost uh, uh, the job, and uh, the churches and on the community, religious community, help a lot of the people with uh, helping with uh, anything, food uh, or clothes, because uh, the people haven't uh, enough money to to live. It was uh, in a, in a month, in a few weeks, we we really uh, see the change in people and the situation. So it was really bad. Um, now is a little bit better. I don't think. I don't think. I don't know anyway. But I. I hope not. But I don't think we are. We are going to a new. A new lockdown because in the hospital the situation is. Uh, we, we are more organized, of course. But uh, we can. We can see what what's happened. Uh, uh, about the the other point of view of the church's organization. I mean the church. I, I said when when I say church, I I I'm thinking about Catholic Church because it's the main church in Italy. But of course, there are many other confessions, 
Protestant churches or the ancient Methodist, Baptists, uh, Pentecostal, but also we have a lot, a lot of mus Muslim communities, very active and uh, Jewish communities. They have organized uh, themselves very, very well, I think, because they reacted to the lockdown, um, trying to continue the worship uh, service um, on uh, Facebook, on uh, Zoom, uh, and uh, speaking uh, for the Protestant churches, for example, the, uh, practically every pastor have a channel and try to continue to, to have a link with the faithful and with prayer and services. And uh, it was a surprise because a lot, a lot of people, they, 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 were, they had a lot of followers. And this, this was good because, um, you know, the churches here are empty, were empty also before the lockdown. And maybe with this emergency, people uh, started again thinking at faith um, and uh, the, uh, how important is the faith in, in, in the life, I don't know. But uh, in the Protestant uh, churches, we have uh, something, a, a new spirit. <laughs> I don't know, in, um, maybe in Catholic churches it, it was different and uh, we had a big confrontation between uh, Catholic church and the government, maybe we can talk uh, after a bit about that because it was um, pretty high. And are the churches now uh, open or closed? What's the That's situation? Support. Yeah, yeah, the, the church are open um, since the 18th of May. So, yeah, but it's still quite empty, but this is a big problem. Uh, I think not only in Italy because the people uh, I'm not not so confident to to go to to the mass, especially now. Especially now, yes, of course. After the lockdown, after because the emergency is not is not uh, over. Uh, we we have we are in the coronavirus emergency still now. So many people, of course, um, all people mostly, and you know the faithful are often old people and uh, they, they, don't are con they are not confident to go to the mass, uh, but the, the churches uh, are open. Okay, uh, uh, but what's the situation in uh, Turkey? Uh, so hi again from Turkey. So we have, uh, we also have the first cases in March in Turkey. At the beginning, I mean the scenes from the China uh, were like science fiction. Uh, we haven't believed that it could come uh, here to our soils, I mean to Turkey. But then in March, uh, everything has started. And at the end of the March, uh, the mosques were closed uh, <clears throat> due to a official decree uh, of the Central uh, Religious Authority. Uh, in Turkey, all the mosques were managed by, uh, by the central religious authority uh, of the state, which is related to the uh, state. This is the way uh, for the state to control the religious life, the religion. Uh, so, of course, the closure uh, of the mosques shocked uh, many devotees. Uh, some of them uh, even have protested the decree, but you know, uh, in Turkey, uh, the state has, a, a, has an iron fist and nobody uh, can change uh, the decision when it has been decided uh, by the authorities. So at the, till the end of the June, uh, the mosques, and by the way, of course, the church in, in Istanbul and in the uh, in Izmir, uh, I mean, uh, these cities are uh, still having some churches and some uh, some other temples from other uh, religions. Uh, all the mosques and churches were closed uh, till the end of the June. Uh, the co coronavirus measures uh, were removed uh, at the end of the June and at the beginning of July. Uh, Turkey has turned uh, to normal. Uh, the holiday towns, 
uh, and uh, by the way, the temples, the mosques were filled with thousands of people uh, again, especially during the eight. Uh, you know, the eight uh, was uh, at the end of the July in Muslim countries. Uh, during the eight, uh, the families have come together, talked and laughed for hours. Now we understand uh, it was really dangerous uh, for coronavirus, for the pandemic. By the way, at the end of the July, a very important religious event uh, has happened in Istanbul. Maybe you already know, uh, you also know, uh, the Hagia Sophia uh, Museum. It was a, a museum um, uh, till the end of the July. But originally, of course, it was constructed uh, as a church uh, thousand years ago by Byzantium Empire, then uh, used as a mosque during the Ottoman Empire and converged to a museum at the beginning of a modern uh, Turkish Republic by the founders of the Republic. Uh, Hagia Sophia has been, has been converged uh, to mosque again at the end of July. And why it's important uh, for, for coronavirus, uh, thousands of people uh, have rushed to the uh, opening celebration and to the uh, first prayer in Hagia Sophia. Of course, uh, no one uh, cared the social distancing rules uh, during the celebrations and prayer. And now, uh, as, as, expe as ex expected, coronavirus uh, cases have risen again uh, in the late uh, August in Turkey now, my country, Turkey, is uh, in the middle of a second wave uh, of the uh, coronavirus pandemic or go through the second peak of the first wave, according to health minister of uh, Turkey. It's a, a disputable issue if it's, it's a new wave or the second peak of the first wave. Yeah. So this is the short story of uh, the coronavirus from yeah. uh, the window of religious uh, things in Turkey. Thanks, Boris. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's not very different from what uh, you guys described in Israel. We also, we had a first wave here. Uh, March, April, they shut down the country pretty, pretty well. Um, and that was uh, during the holiday of Passover, which was in April. And uh, it was a very big deal for, for Jews to not be able to celebrate it traditionally, which is in a big forum, you know, big families and a gathering and everyone goes to synagogue. But people somehow managed. Um, and then uh, May or so, they opened the country again. And now we're in a huge second wave. We've got around 5,000 new cases a day, which is quite a bit for a country of 9 million. Uh, and they shut down the country on Friday, this Friday. Um, and it was just before the Jewish New Year, so it forced people to adapt. Um, normally, the most important prayers of the year, where you go to synagogue, are on the New Year and the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, which is 10 days after the, the New Year. And um, people had to find a new way to celebrate, so you weren't allowed to go to big family meals, and you weren't allowed to go inside a synagogue. So the weather here is okay now, and what people uh, did is set up prayer groups outdoors, in yards, on the streets, and it's kind of a different way of experiencing um, uh, religion, which once used to be based around a certain structure, like the synagogue, the temple, where people go and meet, and the rabbi's there, and everyone's there. And now it's become more local. You, you go down the stairs of your building and there's a group of people praying. It also means though that less people will be part of these prayers in a way. For example, the children are less, it's not as easy, let's put it this way, to, uh, to have big prayers like it is uh, if you have a nice big building with a bathroom and entrances and chairs, it's a bit tougher. 
but there is this feeling that there's a lot of prayer and religion on the streets. Um, so uh, yeah, that is one kind of way that it's um, affecting religious life and how people are adapting. Here too, there's a lot of pressure from uh, religious members of the government to not shut down the country before the high holidays because that would negatively affect uh, the ability to have these big prayers, which are very important. Um, but it's interesting because uh, Federica, you mentioned how uh, evangelists are, are able to put out their message through social media or through the internet. In Israel, that's kind of happening in Judaism, but less so. Uh, Georgia, is, is there a similar phenomenon in, in Cyprus or Greece with the uh, social uh, media? Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, um, when we had the lockdown and we knew that the Easter period is very close because it was in mid-April, I think 20th of April was uh, the Easter, um, all the churches created a Facebook page, they had the Zoom prayers, they, uh, they could uh, stream online and live uh, the Sunday masses, the Sunday services, and especially the services during the Holy Week. Something which was very important for um, for the faithful, for the believers, and uh, it, it was their our unique opportunity to um, connect with our religious feeling. Because during the Easter period, we are all going to the church. Even people who are very secular, who are not uh, observant, they usually go, uh, for example, on Good Friday. So it was very important for us. And churches got adopted very, very quickly. Not only big churches, but also uh, local churches, you know, in villages or uh, in very small neighborhoods in the center uh, of Athens um, or in Cyprus. All the churches got adapted. The same happened also to Cyprus with uh, you know, the Catholic Church, the Maronite churches. Uh, and it also worked with people who live abroad. And they usually come to Greece or to Cyprus for, the, for, for holidays. So th they created also a bond with them, not to lose the connection with their religion and with their traditions. And I, I, I want to admit that churches got adapted very quickly and very efficiently. Yeah. And uh, tell me, um, are there any examples that come to mind from your countries of, uh, of, of, of the way churches are, we spoke about uh, how, how the churches help the communities. Uh, Federica, do you want to maybe talk about what the churches are now doing, the, the Catholic Church in Italy uh, for, for Lesbos? Is that something that you could talk about? Yeah, uh, it's not a thing I, I would like to, to say because uh, it's interesting. You say, uh, Jonah, in, um, in Italy, the Jewish community is, it was the best to communicate uh, through media. And uh, yes, they, the community, the Jewish community, they really did a, a good work. At the, they um, starting since the beginning and uh, every day, six days uh, a week, they, they did the rabbis talk uh, and uh, with starting with uh, teaching the children, with saying about all, really all topics, all things. And they they change the, the way to, com to communicate to, to the people. It was a really big, big change. I have a friend of mine, she, she's Jewish, she working in um, in a, in a newspaper also, and she says it's all change, all all this change in in this in this uh, in this time. So it's, it was um, a big confrontation between the Catholic Church and the government, because uh, the government say that um, uh, at the hand of the hybrid that will we'll, we'll reopen the factories and the magazines, some magazines and the church uh, rises and why why you you will uh, you won't open the factories and not the churches. And so um, the bishop claimed to reopen the, the church, but I think it's not, it, it were not the, the fellow, um, the faithful, but the bishop, the conference of bishops, uh, they, they talk uh, about uh, a wound, uh, an unbelievable wound of religious freedom. 
And so after that, uh, the government uh, in, in fact uh, reopened the church at uh, 18, uh, May 18. But the interesting things is not that because in Italy, you know, normally if a Catholic church says something, government answer. <laughs> the, the interesting is that uh, other uh, religious communities say, why, why not, not, not us? We want the same treatment. And the government say yes, and they signed uh, the really important status. Uh, and the all communities reopen and 18, not only Catholic Church. It is a good sign to the, um, the ecumenical uh, way of uh, stay together and the and a new step uh, in the relationship uh, between uh, government and churches in Italy is not um, it's, it's a really good uh, good things because uh, you know we have uh, at the first place the Catholic Church and at the second and third the other communities but also the, um, the Muslim communities uh, did the same they reopened they uh, they wait for the hand of Ramadan, it was a really good uh, thing because to avoid uh, gathering. So we, I know we, we have um, a new way to stay together after that because um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing, I think. Yeah. A victory well, well, could... also for the ecumenical way of, of uh, life. Yeah. Boris, is there, is there any, do you think that there'll be any change in, in the way that um... Uh, Islam is practiced in Turkey now following the corona. Do you think that the, the mosques will be able to adapt to the more digital or different community structure? Uh, social media or Zoom or other uh, digital mediums are not uh, a common phenomenon for Islam. I mean, in Islam, either you go to mosque or you are alone uh, at your home. You are alone with the gods. Uh, Zoom is uh, not uh, common practice among uh, Muslims because <laughs> I think uh, what is different from uh, other religions in uh, Islam or uh, according to some uh, some ideologies of uh, uh, according according to some parts uh, of Islamic countries, uh, Imams are not as powerful as in, uh, for instance, in Italy, in Catholic uh, religion or in uh, other religions. Imams are uh, not very powerful. You don't need uh, Imams to pray to God in Islam. Of course, the mosques are very important. Uh, especially uh, the Friday prayers are very important in Islam. You need to go to mosque uh, for praying and mosques uh, could even converge to a political place uh, in Fridays because everybody is there. But even again, uh, in fact, you don't need the Imam. So you can pray at your home, but uh, you, you, I, I need uh, to note that uh, there are sects, of course, in Islam, in Turkey, they are, uh, in fact, they are not legal. I mean, the sects are forbidden, were forbidden uh, at the beginning of Turkish Republic, uh, when Ottoman Empire has been uh, demolished and the new republic has been founded in Turkey, all the all the Islamic sects were uh, banned. But of course, in social lives, uh, sects, I mean Islamic sects are very, still very powerful. They were very powerful uh, even say 50 years before and still very powerful. And the sheikhs of the sects, like say Nakshis, for instance, it's a very powerful sect in Turkey and 
uh, in the other uh, neighboring countries in Middle East, sheikhs of uh, the sects have YouTube channels, uh, probably all of them have YouTube channels and they are giving sermons in the channels. But these sermons are not for, uh, I will re reiterate that, these sermons are not for praying. I mean, you can pray by yourself at home, but then to find the road uh, to, to learn the realities, uh, to think about life, you can listen or watch your sheikh if you are a member of a sect. So this is, I mean, uh, there is a nuance between praying and uh, being member of a sect in Islam, at least in Turkey. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to believe, but we're almost out of time. But maybe let's just let's just touch one more aspect um, briefly. I mean, one one religions love to give answers to the big questions of lives. Uh, you know, why are we all dying now? Why are we sick? Why is God angry? So you saw in, in Israel um, with the with the high holidays, you saw some some leaders, some religious community leaders, were saying, you know, this is a reminder that we need to improve ourselves. We need to be better. This is God's way of giving us a message. I was curious if, if uh, in your countries, in your religions, you, you see a similar kind of like uh, galvanizing of the pandemic to kind of increase religious sentiment and involvement. Well, I, don't think so in, I don't think so in Turkey. Uh, of course, I don't have any uh, data uh, or any research about the feeling, feelings of different people. But what I see is the, the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus has given a new power to scientific people. I mean, now in Turkey, everybody, devotees, not devotees, and by the way, uh, Christians and other minorities in Turkey, all of them, I mean, all of us are listening to medicine professors. Now the new sacred, they are kind of sacred now. I mean, the medicine professors, professors are talking and everybody is, uh, everybody, uh, everybody uh, is listening to them. So I don't think so. I mean, uh, the pandemic uh, did not galvanize uh, religion, religious feeling, at least in Turkey. Federica? Yes, I, I think in Italy it's the same, with a lot of confusion, because it's people didn't believe uh, in, the ma in the mask, they say, mm, go to the street saying the mask is mm, not useful, and other people say, yes, the end of the world is going to be now. We, we, you can see anything, but I think Italy is Italy. If you want to see something, you, you can come here, and you can, <laughs> you can see it. No, seriously, I think uh, um, in some churches it was a, a, a great opportunity to think about the faith and how to, uh, to, to, to talk about God and faith. I think in the Protestant church, I'm Protestant, uh, in the Waldensian church, in, it was an opportunity to, to think uh, together about that. Uh, how, you talk, how you can talk about God to the new generation for example, um, and how we can uh, help uh, fragile people or migrants, people, we have a big issue with migration. And uh, as a Protestant church, we have a big, a big important um, project 
since 2015, we, um, with the government, they signed a protocol to, to take people from uh, camp uh, in, uh, on the border, European border, both in Lebanon. And they, become, you, you, they take people and they bring people in a safe way to, to Italy. So it is a religious project, a ecumenical one, because the, Prot the, the Protestant church uh, and may make this project with the Catholic, with um, Sant'Egidio, a comunità, Sant'Egidio community. So it's a, a very um, good uh, AI profile project to save people. And now, okay, they stopped with the pandemic, of course, but now they restart to, to, to work uh, to go to save people because we, we, we really need it in this situation, as you know. Um, we we have not so not only the pandemic emergency we have another social emergency uh, about migrations of course and, and uh, United Europe is closing the door uh, every day much much more and um, build the uh, walls and um, I think as the church in Italy I I think. It, they don't want it. They don't want it. I, and uh, I talk uh, for a Catholic and Protestant too. Mm. Uh, regarding Greece and Cyprus, I would say that most of the priests do not focus on explaining, you know, the divine message or anything behind COVID. Uh, I think that they are divided in two categories. The first category of priests do not refer to COVID, they just say, okay, we have to follow the, uh, the regulations, we have to follow the instructions from the doctors, etc. The second category <laughs> is the one that, uh, you know, spread these conspiracy theories that COVID-19 does not exist, and they try to persuade people that they don't have to follow the rules. And we had a very recent example, I think last week, where a bishop here in Cyprus uh, said to, to the church during, you know, the Sunday sermon uh, that uh, they do not have to send their children to school wearing the mask because wearing the mask here in schools is compulsory. Uh, it's, they don't have to send their, their children to school uh, because this mask is uh, from devil. So it's better to leave them at home without wearing the mask rather than going to school because the education is not useful. So, you know, this was a huge shock for us. But, you know, many people be be believe that. And uh, I don't know if they follow their rules or not, but I'm sure that on the back of their mind, they truly believe this. It's amazing. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, our time is up. Uh, but thank you all for very, very interesting and, and enlightening uh, viewpoints. I wasn't aware of a lot of what you said. It was very interesting also to hear different religions, different countries. Uh, and I'm sure that um, uh, the long-term effects on religion and religious life will only be fully kind of realized in years to come. But there's no doubt that this is going to be a big turning point for a lot of religions and a lot of religious practices. So uh, thank you all and um, stay safe and uh, check out the IARG for the further panels and the previous ones already recorded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Ciao.